Ah, it's easy to defeat the spearman, you just get past the point. Well, that's what they say anyway. The reality doesn't quite pan out like that. In this video, we're going to look at five ways that the spearman can avoid letting the swordsman inside his range. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now, I am here talking about the spear and we're going to look at this from the spearman's perspective and how the spearman is going to defeat the swordsman. Um, now, I spend most of my time te teaching people how to use swords, but I also teach them how to use spears. And the fact is that in an unarmoured context without a shield, the person with the spear usually has a big advantage over the person with the sword. Most people who've tried this know that. However, the internet's nevertheless littered with people who say, all you need to do with the sword is cross the spear and close in, which fundamentally is true, but it's a bit like saying that all you need to do to win a duel is to kill the other person. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, that grossly over oversimplifies it. What we're gonna look at here is five ways that the spearman can actually basically cancel out the swordsman who's managed to get a cross or a bind or a parry on their shaft and is starting to come inside their range. But before we jump into the main content of this video, I want to talk to you quickly about the awesome sponsors for this game who are Hero Wars. Hero Wars is the fantasy team building combat game with really cute little heroes. In game, the campaign mode has more than 130 different missions and there are more than 50 different heroes. You can give it a try right now on the link below or the QR code on screen. And there's an amazing offer right now to win real prizes. They need 10,000 downloads to open the portal and get you some real prizes. And the prizes are going to be Amazon digital gift cards. 10 of $500, 50 of $100, and 100 at $50. Everybody who downloads the game using the special link are going to be entered in the sweepstakes. But you have to use that link to be in. All you've got to do is download the game using one of the tracking links on the website, complete the short tutorial, and sign up for a free game account. The sweepstakes are open to non-registered users of Hero Wars, legal residents of the 50 United States, and 18 years of age and older. And there is absolutely absolutely no purchase required in order to enter the sweepstakes. You are limited to only one entry with one game ID. Winners will be drawn on or around the 2nd of November 2022 and the odds of winning depend on the number of people that enter. The list of winners in-game names or nicknames will be listed on the website once the prizes are awarded. I love upgrading my heroes and fighting in the campaigns in this game. It's a lot of fun. Why don't you go and check out that link right now? If you go to that website link you can download the game now and we can open the portal to Dominion. And if you go and do that now, or in fact if you do it by the 31st of October, then you stand a chance of winning some awesome prizes. So I will see you in Hero Wars. So thanks very much to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the main content. So first of all we have to define what do we mean when the swordsman crosses, binds or closes inside your line. Well quite simply if we've got a spear they can be of numerous lengths. We're assuming here, bear in mind, there's no armour or at least negligible armour involved and there's no shield involved. And I have to be completely honest, whilst the spear has in general a big advantage over the sword, that is with the exception of when armour is a factor or when shields are a factor. Shields and armour, either individually or together, make a big difference to the spear's effectiveness and they close down lines and also close down parts of the actual target that you can hit such that you can close in on a spearman much, much more easily if you have a spear and a sh or a shield. But if you don't have much armour or if you don't have a shield, for example you're an archer or you know, you've got a small buckler or it's a civilian environment, it might be self-defence, whatever, in these types of situations where you don't have a lot of armour, you don't have a shield, the other person has got a long pole arm, in this case a spear, um, they have a whole bunch of advantages which we've covered a lot in previous videos. Check out my playlist incidentally, I've got a spear playlist talking about lots of these topics. So we talk about leverage, we talk about angulation, we talk about reach obviously and reach in numerous ways. Remember that the hands don't have to stay static on the weapon, they can also kind of snooker cue as we sometimes call it or slide. So you've got a huge amount of reach, huge amount of speed, huge amount of leverage and power. But yes absolutely if you are the swordsman then what the swordsman's aiming to do is essentially try and get to the range where your blade can get in distance of the tip or at least the end of the opponent's spear such that you can form a bind or cross against it. Now 
That can take many forms. It could be in many angles. Most commonly in my experience, it tends to be point up on either side or point down on either side or very occasionally upwards, but it could potentially be from other weird and wonderful angles. But generally speaking, you're pushing the points to the outside away from your center line so that you can charge in. And once you charge in the theory and what people say, is you should be able to carve up the spearman because your shorter weapon is an advantage at that distance. And overall, that's kind of true and that's how the theory works. But what we're gonna look at now are the five ways that the spearman can nullify that even after the bind, the five things that they can do to escape their gory fate at the hands of the swordsman. So first up is pretty simple. I've detached the mic, so I'm gonna retreat so you can see me do this. When my spear points towards the ground, that's me signifying that the opponent swordsman has bound or uh, parried, blocked, locked out my spear tip. And then I'm gonna react in one of the most common ways of reacting when a swordsman does this to your spear. Retreat, that's right. So the fact is that when the swordsman crosses the tip of your spear, what they have to do then is charge at you. They are gonna charge forward. What you can do at almost the same speed is charge backwards. <laughs> now, a lot of people would think, well, you can run forwards quicker than you can run backwards, but actually off the mark, they're actually not that different. And experience has shown me that someone who retreats very quickly with a spear can usually disentangle, disengage their spear quick enough to be able to then nail the swordsman who's now running towards them. So that moment as a swordsman when you bind and start to charge is extremely critical and you have to keep the bind. If you lose the bind on the spear, you're gonna run onto the end of the spear, especially if the spearman retreats. Now, option number two can either be done while retreating or it can be done standing on the spot. Okay, but I do regard it and view it as a separate action. So you can join some of these actions together, and we'll look at that again in a minute. You can join some of these actions together or they can be distinct things. So I'm gonna do it standing on the spot for a second here, and I'll do it sideways so that you can see me doing it. Right, so if I've got my spear out here and I'm trying to get points in on the opponent, it could be um, either side at the side around, any kind of angle, anything like this, and they manage to catch my point and push it aside. Okay, at this point, they've now bound my point. They're now charging in at me. I can do this. Okay, slip it back. And I'll call this slipping the shaft or sliding the shaft. And quite simply, I'm sure a lot of you would love to slide the shaft, but uh, the fact is that this is absolutely simple. And it's also part of your attacking uh, kind of repertoire. Because when we're attacking with the spear, very often we're doing this anyway. So actually we're already kind of doing loads of this and very, very used to um, attacking with this slide. If the opponent does knock the point offline and charge in, it's completely natural to slide it straight back. And as mentioned, I can do it whilst retreating. So if um, the person's charging really, really fast, as they charge in at me, not only can I run backwards, but I can slide the shaft as well, bam, and then nail them in the gut or head or wherever as they're trying to charge in. So if you combine the speed of you physically retreating and the speed of you pulling the spear tip back, it's very difficult for a charging advancing swordsman to be faster than that. Now, number three option, again, this can be combined with other ones in this list, but I'm gonna call this circle shaft or circling the shaft, okay? Now, any of you who've done modern Olympic style fencing foil, for example, will know about the circular disengage. That is, if you've got your sword out here and the opponent comes underneath your sword, you can follow it around and lock them back to the outside. When you're fencing with spears or bayonets or any point-centric weapon, rapiers, small swords, the fact is you get used to doing a lot of this anyway, because if the opponent gets on your inside line, you'll often go around, carry their weapon to the outside, and now you're on the inside line. And it can be done in either direction, uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, and it can be done finishing down or finishing point up. You can do a half circle as well as a full circle. So we're used to doing this circular motion. 
Therefore, when you try to stab someone with a spear uh, and they're using a sword, if they lock out your, um, your spear and start charging at you, you can simply move around and nail them on the other side of the weapon. And this can either be a full circle if it needs to be, or it could be a half circle. So for example, uh, if they've locked you out high to the right, you could come down low to the, uh, sorry, high to the left, you could come down low to the left, or you could come all the way around and nail them in the face. So circular disengage, circular motion, super important. And as mentioned, you can combine it with the previous two things. You can do it whilst running backwards. You can also do a circular disengage whilst sliding the weapon and then come back in. So you can start to do a circle, pull it back, and then advance the spear back out again afterwards. So retreating, sliding or slipping, and circular motions can all be combined or they can be used distinctly. And remember, you can't always retreat. Um, so, you might have to stand on the spot because you're part of a group, because you've got a back to a wall, you're on a precipice, you've got bodies lying behind you, any kinds of things, okay? So there might be reasons why you can't run backwards or you can't even run off to a side. And so you might have to do the slipping uh, or the circular in isolation or combined with any of those previous things. Okay, so number four option for the spearman is what I've called high-low left-right, but you could call it moving to the next opening. Okay, so quite simply, uh, if we look at something like Joachim Meyer from 1570, he divides up the target into four numbered pieces, quadrants, quarters. Okay, if we think of it like that, so we've got maybe one, two, three, four, or something like that, it doesn't matter how you number them, um, then quite simply, if I've attacked one bit and my weapon's got locked out to that side, I can move with a little movement back to another bit. So you can simply attack to the next opening. Okay, so it's renewing your attack. And admittedly, again, there will be combining things that we've said previously. There might be a slight, slight uh, shift backwards to disengage your blade from, uh, sorry, your spear from their blade. Or you might, more usually I would say, just simply slip the shaft back in your hand. So if you've gone uh, maybe thrust at the belly and maybe they carried your weapon up high, you can pull it back and now go in low at the crotch. Or you might go in low at the crotch, they might take it off to the side. You can do part of a circular movement and now thrust at the head. So with a very small movement, either a part of a circle or part of a slip, again, we're looking at the previous categories here, you can just simply attack to the next opening. This is especially the case, um, and it, kind of this is the simplest version of this, is if the swordsman doesn't capitalize or doesn't kind of their brain doesn't kick in and realize they need to start charging at you. And this is actually surprisingly common. We all know the theory, but bear in mind, that the spear against the swordsman should be used very aggressively coming in everywhere. So oftentimes the swordsman is frantically just trying to keep that spear away from themselves. So a lot of those parries, they might go parry, 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 then charge. A lot of those parries won't be accompanied by the charge. So in many cases, you'll be going stab, stab, stab to all different places and they'll just be frantically trying to protect themselves. Remember the spear is not just defensive, it's also offensive, and I would say more offensive than the, than the um, sword in this situation. So going to the next open, opening, as some people call it, drilling the important openings, as my friend Matt Gallus was, I think he used to call it. Um, so that's number four on this list. So the fifth and final option is Rotating your shaft. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, quite simply, again, this can be combined with other things we've talked about previously, the other four things in this list of five. But essentially, it means that if your tip gets pushed aside like this, you can simply bring your weapon around and use that end, okay? Now, this is extremely common in poleaxe fighting, but we also find it in spear material as well. If you look at um, Fiore Delibery's techniques of spear, in fact, he's only got a couple, but one of them is this, and it is rotating the weapon. So if the swordsman 
pushes your point aside or parries your thrust and it ends up aside. And they do effectively charge at you very, very quickly. So much so that you can't retreat or maybe there's some other reason you can't retreat. There's people behind you or whatever. You can't slip the weapon back for some other reason. Again, it might be because there's people or an object behind you. You just can't do anything to get back here. So what you've got to do at that point is rotate the shaft and use the back end. And notice there are numerous ways to get the shaft around. If it's being pushed off to the side or low or up or down, this partly dictates it. So if it gets pushed up, the most natural rotation will be to come upwards. If it gets pushed down, you can rotate downwards. If it gets pushed to the side, you can come around. But you can do any of those rotations up, down, around from any of those parries or deflections that the swordsman might have done. And again, this can be combined with the other things in this list. So you'll notice that sometimes the best way to rotate the weapon is to slip the shaft, rotate it, and notice I've slipped the other way. So, let's look at that again. I pull the point back towards my lead hand, and I rotate it as I extend the back. And bear in mind a lot of spears might some might just have a butt, a uh, you know, flat end like this, but some of them will have some kind of metallic shoe or even another spike on the other end. And as mentioned, this rotation, as well as the slip, could be combined with a retreat backwards, could be combined with a circular disengage and come around with the back, and you can slip freely with the hands on the weapon to change the reach and length that you've got on either end of it at any time. This is very common in quarterstaff, poleaxe, a whole bunch of other related weapons to the spear. So I hope that's been useful advice for you spearmen out there. Maybe if there's an appetite for it, you'd like to see my advice for the swordsman in a future video. If so, comment below. As always, if you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It makes a big difference to me and the algorithm and everything else. It makes me feel valued. I'm Matt Easton, and I hope I'll see you back on the channel again really soon. Cheers for watching. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.